Welcome back to The Big Show. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of my favourite people and the world's biggest stars. And it's always nice when you get an international megastar on the programme. Chrissy Heiner, how are you? <laughs> Good. And of course we've got JP there as well. How are you, mate? Very well, thanks. Very good. Now you've got this new project together and we're talking to you today from LA. And I'm not talking about Luton Airport. You're actually in the proper LA. Yeah, LA yeah. on sea. Yeah. <laughs> That's exciting. Tell us about your new project together then. Well, it's a collaboration. We've written this album together. It's a story about our sort of doomed relationship. We met in a party and I was going off on tour and JP sent me some songs and we got together when I finished touring, went to Cuba and really wrote most of this album there. Were you always gifted? I mean, we all know you for your unique voice and that goes without saying. I mean, certainly in this album, there's, there's a certain uh, timbre to your voice and a certain sound to it. Can you be trained that or was that just a God-given gift? Yeah, I'm a rock singer, you know. We don't, we're not trained. We don't take lessons. We just do our thing. <laughs> so you were born doing it. And in terms of your inspirations growing up, who did you love to listen to? I know, when I was 14 and started hearing the Beatles and that whole, what we called the English Invasion, I didn't even know they had rock bands in England. I thought everyone was, you know, trotting around on dappled grey horses. JP, tell me about meeting Chrissy and how that happened and what you fell in love with first. Was it the voice or the person? You know, I met her, at, like Chrissy said, at this bar and we were both drunk and it was just one of those things that I, you know, never expected to be making, to have made an album and toured the States with her at that point. But, um, we, um, I, I always, from the last The Independence album, I loved The Pretenders and her voice. And I just, you know, but, you know, I just, I just love her as for who she is. And, you know, um, and I love her voice too. But, you know, I love her more than her voice. Definitely. In terms of the alchemy of making this record, and congratulations on it, by the way, just a tremendous sound. The album was recorded in two weeks and uh, then we tied it up in a studio, so it was done very quickly. Actually. Yeah, we we did each we wrote each song in about twenty minutes. We really didn't sort of think about it. I think people probably think too much about worry too much about things these days, and that, that's well, why it's that's an why a lot to of get songs, on the radio on Radio yeah. One and trying to you know have a big hit. And, it all, it all know, sounds I don't too think forced. Like that. It's fascinating because I don't understand how that's possible. You see, if I sit down, I can't do anything in 20 minutes. So literally, the process was you sat down together and who did what? Well, it was kind of like a conversation we were having with each other, which is why it was done quickly and it's certainly not edited. We were sort of writing songs with each other and to each other. So it was, I mean, you can have a conversation in 20 minutes and that's, I think 20 minutes is not giving it, you know, we, there were... We spent a little longer than that. Well, I mean, the ideas, you know, came in within 20 minutes and then we'd sort of go out for dinner in Cuba and write songs on serviettes and stuff. But, you know, they were pretty much done very quickly. You know, I yeah, wouldn't say much longer. But we could see that our relationship was doomed. We got to Cuba and realized that things would have been very different had I been 30 years younger. And then we sort of prophesized our future in this album. I've seen you live so many times and there's no greater thrill than seeing just someone raw uh, with a guitar just singing. I know JP of course you did guitar on this as well and the bass and that that keeps everything going. Is there any sexier instrument by the way f for a musician than the bass because I mean you've got the balls of the song haven't you really? Oh the guitar is much sexier than the bass come on. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be true can it JP? Well I, no I agree with her actually but you know I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a bass player I just I, I'm that was the first time I've really, I mean, I've played bass on demos and stuff at home, but it, it, the Vezio Bacci who plays most of the bass, but I just played it on a few because I it made just needed, it. she made, Chrissy made me because we needed just more of a punky raw thing on the on a couple of the songs. So, but um, I, I love playing bass and I, but I, you know, I'm a, I wouldn't call myself a guitarist, but I do, that's what I do play. I, I'm on stage and mainly I play guitar. All right, we're going to take this new single then. It's called If You Let Me. Tremendous single from the brand new album by JP and Chrissy Hind. Uh, we'll take that and then we'll come back. And I need to find out about confidence and going up to ladies because the way you approach Chrissy is remarkable. And we'll get to that next. We're back with JP and Chrissy Hind here on your favourite local radio station. We're talking about their new album, which is uh, out now. The new single is called If You Let Me. Tremendous. Uh, well done on that, guys. More importantly to me, though, of course, JP, is, is your confidence. I mean, you were able to just walk up to Chrissy and basically say, look at me, I'm delicious. Would you accept? That's more or less it, isn't it? No, not really. He had to get through all my bodyguards and my entourage. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you know, I'm not the scariest person. I... I'm very easily approachable on a bus or, you know, in a kiosk because I spend a lot of time alone and 
he's a very friendly guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I literally would talk to anyone, you know, it's not, I never, I just thought it was Chrissy Hind, I knew who she was, and she was just stood there, and so was I, so I said, hey, and, you know, it wasn't this planned sort of, you know, um, I didn't think about it, I, I drunk, you know, like 10 beers as well, so it was, uh, it was just, I don't know, you know, I, it, I just said, hey, and I thought that was going to be it, but we just started, we chatted for the rest of the night and swapped numbers and stuff, so... You see, yeah. that's what I admire, though, because I can't do that, you see. If I meet somebody I like, I run in the other direction for fear that they'll tell me to bog off I'm too unattractive or, or not worth talking to. It would make me nervous. So. Well, I guess Nothing you're going to have to find someone on the <laughs> internet, then. <laughs> and if I didn't have the internet, I wouldn't find anybody, Chrissy. let me tell you now. Um, <laughs> this album, I mean, I've listened to it all the way through, and I'm struggling to put my finger on how to describe it for my audience, because it's a bit rocky, it's a bit folky, it's a bit bluesy, it's a bit country-ish. What is it? It's a rock album. Rock album, yeah. So we did it also on the spur of the moment, and we didn't think about stylistically. You know, we wanted to make a rock album, of of course, but it was. Um, it, we we it, we just did what we made these demos, and we stayed true to the demos with the band when they came in, and um, you know, each song just lent itself to whatever is on it, I guess. And mm. so, I guess that's why it's so diverse. But you know, just like. Um, just like the way we wrote them, we didn't plan any of it. I was listening to the lyrics. Australia tells the story of how you met, yet you met in London, didn't you? Or have I got that wrong? We met in London, but Australia is kind of a metaphor. You know, we met each other and, well, actually, our, the, our lives completely changed that night. So I think Australia was saying, I'll take you to the Gold Coast. It was like, you know, let's get far away from here. Let's go off and have a new life. Just a metaphor of like, yeah, how ah. we could take each other to a faraway place and... Australia is the furthest away, I guess. Tremendous work, and thank you so much for sparing the time to talk to us today. And uh, well done on a beautiful album, beautifully produced as well. I, I'm always amazed when I find out these things are done so quickly. But you're saying if you've got it right and everything's in the right place, it can happen like that. Yeah, and when you've got a piano player like Sam Swallow from Geisley in Leeds, you know, then uh, you can't really go wrong. Yeah, I had to put his name he's, in he's there. He's the secret weapon. He's magic. <laughs> Very nice. And it was all down to a man from Leeds that made it so perfect. I'll make a note of that. Well, you know, he's, he's my best mate. He's a, he's a great <laughs> piano player. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. Congratulations on this lovely new album called Fidelity. JP and uh, Chrissy, thank you so much for coming on uh, the show. And uh, good luck with the new album. I'm sure it's going to do great. And to end with then, another track from the album that you're very proud of and that we can end and show the listeners why it's so brilliant. You choose. You choose. I can never do this. Don't know. Uh, meanwhile. <laughs> meanwhile. We'll end with that. Thanks for talking to us, guys. Thank you. Thank you.